Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah and this is Analog Resurgence and today I'm taking a look at Lomography's Berlin 400 black and white film. Lomography's Berlin film is a 400 ISO black and white negative film, and you can get it in 35 millimeter and 120 medium format rolls. 400 is also a really easy ISO to work with when you're shooting film, and also a really common one with other things like HP5 and Tri-X also having a 400 ISO. Lomography also markets Berlin as being inspired by the new German cinema that was sweeping through Berlin in the 1960s, as well as saying that the film itself is sourced from a German manufacturer that's been making motion picture films since the early 1900s. A few weeks ago, I looked at Lomography's 800 ISO color negative film, and I was talking about how a lot of Lomography's film that they sell is actually just like sourced and rebranded film from another manufacturer, which is really common for a lot of companies that aren't like Ilford or Kodak or Fuji that are selling film. Their 800 ISO color negative stuff is most likely rebranded Kodak stuff. And by doing a little bit of investigation, we can also kind of assume that probably the Berlin stuff is sourced from German film manufacturer Orwo. Orwo is a German film manufacturer that's been around for a long time, with originally having ties to Agfa before becoming its own thing in the 1960s. Orwo makes cinema film, which is exactly what Berlin is and exactly what Lomography is marketing it as. It's most likely just Lomography rebranding Orwo N74. N74 is a 400 ISO black and white cinema film, which fits this description. Also going forward, the black and white stuff that I'll be showing off here for the role reviews has been self-developed and scanned by myself. And I know there's a ton of different developing options and scanning options and different techniques and programs and workflows that everybody likes to have when they're doing their own film at home. This stuff was developed in Kodak HC110, which is a really common, really easy to get your hands on developer. And it was flatbed scanned using an Epson V700. If you wanna see all the film scans for this stuff and everything that I show off in the raw reviews, then you can head over to the link in the description for the Analog Resurgence Patreon. You can support the channel over there and allow me to do more and more of this stuff. But let's show off some scans and talk about exactly what you might expect to see if you're shooting Lomography's Berlin 400 film. Lomography's Berlin is most definitely a cinema film, and it has a look that separates it from some of the more standard black and white films that are more widely available. It's got such solid contrast in the images, but also retains a really good range and versatility for the situations you're shooting in, which did surprise me a little bit. Inside with low light, you can still achieve great shadow detail and a really full looking image. Looking at these shots that show a bit of over and under exposure by just a stop or two, we can see that it still captures a really good looking image. So versatility is definitely like a big thing that this stuff has going for it. I'm actually a pretty big fan of the look of this stuff and you can see the cinema aspects of it in how it like handles the mixed contrast and the scenes that you're capturing as well as the grain. I would love to actually shoot this stuff in a motion picture format and see it come to life. But be warned that if you're shooting this stuff, then you had better like grain because you're gonna get a ton of it for this 400 ISO film. It's not your standard 400 photography film like Kodak's Tri-X. Tri-X has a much, much more subtle grain when you stack it up against Berlin. Berlin is a cinema film, so the grain tends to be more prominent. It's also different against something like Japan Camera Hunter's Street Pan film, which does have a heavy contrast, but also has like a much more dramatic look to it. It's actually better to compare this stuff to other motion picture film stocks like Kodak's Double X black and white film, which is also a really popular stock to shoot as stills. Berlin has a lot more in common with Double X than it does with something like Tri-X or something like HP5 from Ilford. So I can see the appeal of Berlin and also just shooting motion picture film stocks as stills in general. This stuff was fun. 400 ISO is really easy to shoot. And of course the film's versatility means you shouldn't have any trouble getting great looking results back from this stuff. So as I said, this stuff is most likely Orwo N74, which means that you can get this stuff in motion picture format rolls as well. I know for sure that you can get it in 16 millimeter because Lyft here in Toronto sells it on 100 foot rolls for 16 millimeter cameras like a Bolex. And it's got that kind of like really heavy grainy, like contrasty look to it that I would love to pick up a roll of this stuff and shoot it in a motion picture camera. Lomography also sells a very similar black and white film called Potsdam. That film's like a 100 ISO equivalent of this stuff where it's gonna give you like a very similar look and feel to the Berlin stuff, but in 100 ISO instead. But it's also marketed as being from a German cinema manufacturer. And because it has a 100 ISO, we can narrow that down to meaning that it's probably Orwo UN54 
which is a 100 ISO black and white motion picture film that Orwell makes. So Berlin, N74. Potsdam, probably UN54. And I know a lot of people out there are probably not super into Lomography stuff or don't easily have access to buying Lomography stuff either. So if you're really after shooting stuff like this, then you can look into other options, like finding somewhere to buy a 400 foot roll of this stuff in 35 millimeter from motion picture cameras, and then bulk loading smaller rolls of it in order to shoot it as stills. Or the Film Photography Project even sells small 35 millimeter rolls of this Orwo stuff, both N74 and UN54, so that you can get those rolls and shoot them as stills. It's gonna lack the Lomography branding if you're just buying those rolls, but you're gonna pretty much get the same thing that Lomography is offering, but through the Film Photography Project and at a bit of a discount. Film Photography Project also sells small rolls of Kodak's X film as well. So if you're really after shooting motion picture black and white stocks as 35 millimeter stills in these cameras, then the Film Photography Project is also a really great place to go and look for that stuff. So as much as I did enjoy shooting the Berlin stuff, going through the Film Photography Project to shoot more of it or something really similar to it is maybe a little more appealing and also cheaper than going directly to Lomography to buy this stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching and checking this out and subscribe if you haven't done so already. There's also links in the description for um, Berlin stuff, but also the Orwell stuff specifically from Film Photography Project. The address for the PO box, if you've got interesting film or just weird stuff that you wanna send to the channel so that I can do videos on it or show it off or talk about it more. Links to the Analog Resurgence Patreon if you wanna support the channel so that this stuff can continue being a thing that you guys watch for as long as there is film, and information for Pro 8 millimeter out in California if you're looking for resources on like Super 8 and 16 millimeter as well for those motion picture film stocks. And speaking of the PO box, it's time to open a little bit of mail. Uh, so I've been a little behind with this stuff and have had a couple of boxes here for a few days. The first one here has a couple of interesting things in it and it comes to me courtesy of Dave Pirinelli who is a frequent uh, commenter on the channel as well. Thanks for your fun and informative YouTube channel. I seem to recall your IMAX episode lacked an example so I've included one. I've also included an original Polaroid PR22 exposure meter in case you do more with the old roll film stuff. And he also included a roll of slide film Velvia 50 in 120 medium format, which is currently sitting in the fridge, as well as a book of short stories, uh, which actually has something in here that he wrote. There he is right on the cover. So I'm gonna flip through this stuff because this has been sitting uh, on a shelf here for the last couple of days. There is this little Polaroid light meter, which would have gone on all the old Polaroid roll film cameras, like the one that Alex and I were using. It's kind of set up only for the Polaroid stuff, but it is such a nice little old uh, 1950s or 1960s Polaroid light meter. And of course, the coolest part about all of this is he sent along a IMAX film strip from Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk. It looks really, really nice. I know that these were handed out at like early screenings or like special screenings of Dunkirk, but it's such a cool example of just like the sheer size of IMAX film and when you're able to see something that's projected on IMAX film, it just like looks so incredible. This came to me uh, just yesterday from Miguel in Portugal. Hi Noah, here is a cartridge of Fuji pack film for Polaroid cameras. It's been in my fridge for years and likely it's been there since before the expiry date. I'm not sure if it will work okay, hopefully it will, and you may get some good results from it. The APS film has been in the freezer since before the expiry date, so it's likely you'll get at least some results from it. Thank you for your videos. I've been a follower for quite a few months now. Hope you get to 100,000 subscribers and go on for years, even if you have to eventually go digital. Probably won't go digital. I feel like that would be a weird switch. So yes, the box contains an expired roll of Kodak Advantix black and white film in APS format. I know I've said I would try and revisit APS at some point, but a well-preserved roll of APS might be worth actually going after. But of course, the main part of this package, he included a box of FP100C Fuji's Instant Peel Apart film uh, with an expiration date of 2016, which is pretty good for this stuff. The fact that, Miguel, that you would send this along means so much to me and is really gonna be great because there is more like pack film and instant stuff coming up. Now that I've started to talk about like the Polaroid roll film, which is gonna go into the pack film and of course, 
the Fuji Pack film. So this is incredibly exciting. So a huge thank you to David and to Miguel for like sending this stuff along. And while I've got you here, I've got to do the Patreon shout outs for the end of August, beginning of September. Abby Henderson, Abo Sylvia, Alex Onkin, Andrew McFarlane, B.W., Belasso Sue, Bearded, Benjamin MacArthur, Bingling Zoo, Blake Moeller, Bobby, Carson Fuller, Caesar, Chally and Christ, Chaz Allen, Chris Rohrer, Colin Jackson, Dan Gross, David Pirinelli, Derek Konigsberg, Edwin Goodwin, E. Good, Emma Clyden, Eric Machin Christensen, Frederick Kulatunga, Futigu, Gaurav Pai, Juliana Lepedalina, Graham Sheffer, Henry and Megan, Ian Farber, Ian Frank, Jamie Maldonado, Jeremy Lee Camp, Jonathan Hurd, Larry O, Matthew Ehlers, Nadia Pedot, Natalie Etienne, Nick Kosh, Orlando Perez, Poppy, Purple Doug, Ramblings from Canada, Raul Suet de Morris, RTH, Ruby Alfario, Ryan Peters, Sam Davison, Scott Vansell, Scott Walker, Sean Williams, The Super 8 Skateboard Company, Taylor Brown, Taylor Cusella, Thomas Wibley, Tiago Almanca, Tobias Erickson, Travis Tobin, and Tycora Thomas. And an extra special shout out to the people who went above and beyond on the Patreon. So a special thank you to Andrew McFarlane, Carson Fuller, Charlie and Christ, David Pirinelli, Eric Machin Christensen, Super 8 Skateboard Company, and Taylor Brown. So that's it. That's the show for this week. And uh, I'll see you guys soon.